Here we are in front of one of the queens of the southern landscape, Magnolia grandiflora, uh, the southern magnolia. And you can see that this is a giant, a giant tree, the one I'm standing in front of, probably 50 foot tall and maybe like 30 foot wide. So this is a big old specimen. Uh, as I come up to it, I look at the leaves and I see that they are alternately arranged. Uh, these, these leaves are evergreen, so they'll stay on uh, throughout the winter months. And they've got, in a lot of cases, a beautiful, dense, coppery colored pubescence on the back side. Uh, this tree can be very low branching like this one is. Uh, I'm right down in it. Uh, it is done with its main kind of spring flush of flowers, uh, but it will continue to throw flowers throughout the entire summer season. So the Southern Magnolia, you know, in this Magnolia used to make up a quite large distribution of North temperate forests, uh, but now is mostly in the, in the Southeastern United States uh, from the Atlantic and the Gulf Coastal Plains, uh, hardy from zone six through 10, uh, you'll find this. The ones that you find for the home landscape in commercial settings are quite a bit more attractive than the ones that you'll find in the wild. And so choosing cultivars that have the size and the habit, uh, the flowering capacity, uh, and the leaf, color, uh, leaf shape and colors that you want uh, are really good to do uh, to make sure you get the right one for your home landscape. The fruit is an aggregate of dry, cylindrical, hairy carpels that turn red, red, brown with age. Each follicle contains one one half inch long bright red seed in the fall. Here's a landscape tip. This broad-leaved evergreen magnolia is one of the most iconic plants in southern gardening.